Welcome back to the channel. Got a piece of 1144 stress proof steel chucked up in the closing lathe and we're going to make a wrist pin today for the 8 horse mogul project. So let's go. Got a live center in the end of the part there for a little tail support and uh, I'm going to get going here. I'm going to bring the tool in and uh, just touch off uh, about 6 inches uh, uh, part length here so it's kind of a mark. I've got a sharpie mark there and I'm just going to make a little mark here with uh, with the tool so I know how far to machine in and then uh, zero the uh, uh, cross feed and we'll start machining. Well long story short I um, wasn't happy with how that uh, tool was working. Uh, it wasn't making a good finish on this stress proof, so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, sometimes that's the way it is. Um, you got to just change stuff up to get a finish that you want. So I switched to a different tool. It's got a little different profile insert on there, and we'll see how that works. And uh, so I'll get the uh, quick change set here to the right angle for the part, and um, then I'm going to use a uh, machinist uh, straight edge here and um, use that to uh, put the tool on center line for the uh, part. Uh, it's real quick and easy to do. You just put that in there and uh, pinch it in lightly and then um, that will uh, uh, tell you where your height is. Uh, basically you want it to be just straight up and down vertical. That would be right on the center line of the part and then just drop it slightly. So uh, it's going to sight that in and then uh, lock the tool down and we'll be ready to use this new in, new insert. So here we go with the new tool. Um, shooting for a nominal uh, one and a half inch diameter on this uh, part. Uh, I'm going to be a few tenths under that but an uh, inch and a half is where I'm going. The material was originally when I purchased it one and nine sixteenths in diameter so I've got about sixty two thousandths to take off. Taking about a 25 thousandths pass here. Uh, seems to work pretty good with this tool. I'm getting a little better finish on the uh, surface there and um, moving kind of slow with the cross feed there just so I get a good finish. Um, I have a little bit of run out in this lathe that I'm going to have to compensate for so I want a really nice finish to uh, run the mic on. And here we are getting uh, towards the end of the pass. You can see the uh, better finish that this uh, insert's making. Uh, the camera kind of shows it. It just comes out with a really nice finish. So I'm um, pretty pleased with that. It's a good, uh, good guess on where the problem was. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll go with that and see if we can get a good finish on here. I'm um, going to put a mic on it here in a little bit. But um, uh, this lathe has a little bit of run out in it. Uh, it's about two thousandths on this first foot of travel of the ways from the uh, uh, chuck. So the chuck end is uh, a little bigger than, uh, than the tail end of the part by about two thousandths. So I can compensate for that uh, by adjusting the cross feed as I move across. Um, and then also I can use uh, some files and um, uh, emery paper as we'll be seeing here in a little bit to uh, get the, uh, the true dimension down on it. So. Here we are using a little emery paper, uh, 320 grit. Just going to run it across there and uh, clean it up just a little bit. Um, just to polish it down for the micrometer. Um, and this is uh, kind of the process I'm going to go through here. It's going to be kind of tedious uh, back and forth between the mic and uh, uh, wiping the uh, part off and micing it and then going back and, and machining a little bit. Uh, um, so I'm wiping the, uh, the grit and the dust off of the part now. Taking a mic reading now, I've still got about ten thousandths to go. Um, this micrometer is an Edelon. It's a uh, Swedish uh, mic. I really like it. Uh, just recently picked it up from a, another machinist. Uh, it's easy to read uh, a half a thousandths, five tenths uh, on this uh, dial. So uh, really precise and it's going to be my go-to tool for uh, this kind of work from now on. 
And here we are finishing up uh, another pass. Uh, this will be the last pass that we have to do. Um, so we'll be right down to the inch and a half dimension after this pass and then uh, we'll switch it over to some uh, files to true the part up from the run out of the machine. Here we are taking a final mic reading. I'm still about a thousandths over on this uh, chuck end. The other end is uh, right on uh, the inch and a half dimension, so uh, I can't really take that kind of material off uh, predictably with this insert. So uh, we're going to switch up and uh, go to a different technique now. Using a hand file now to take some material off. I'm uh, coating it with this. Uh, Sidewalk chalk, it uh, keeps the chips from uh, plugging the uh, teeth of the file. If you've ever had a file do that, they're a real pain to get uh, cleaned. So this uh, chalk keeps that from happening. I'm going to try to go across this as uh, smoothly as I can. It's kind of a hard uh, feature to uh, do or procedure to do. So uh, I'm just going to take a few passes here and measure. It's a really good way to take off uh, quarter to half a thousandths and uh, walk into the dimension you want. Um, so I'm just uh, going to feather that down and uh, hopefully get to my uh, half thousandths under across the whole part. So I'm going to wipe the part down, uh, take a mic reading. Uh, it's going to be pretty much the procedure here for a while so I can sneak in on that uh, nominal uh, inch and a half. Uh, I want to come in about uh, half a thousandths under that. Uh, so I'm uh, just going to take a reading here and uh, that's what we'll be doing here for a while. Getting real close now. I'm um, just switched over to using only 600 grit uh, emery paper to go the last uh, little bit I need to do here. Um, so uh, this is the absolute finest way to take material off takes quite a while to take hardly anything off at all so uh, do a quick mic check here and verify that I'm down to dimension and uh, it turned out that I am I'm right at the uh, half thousandths under uh, the inch and a half and I've got about one ten thousandths run out in the part so I'm real pleased with that um, so just kind of a quick check here and then we'll go on to the next feature This is the wrist pin end of the connecting rod. It's got this pinch bolt arrangement for holding the uh, wrist pin in and that uh, pinch bolt protrudes into the uh, uh, bore there a little bit so we have to mill out a uh, slot in the wrist pin to clear that when it's inserted. Uh, these moguls use this method to uh, hold the wrist pin. Uh, here we are on the bridge port. Uh, I'm going to use a three quarter uh, inch ball nose end mill to uh, take this slot out. Uh, this slot has a couple of purposes. One, it keeps the uh, wrist pin from turning in the uh, uh, connecting rod. Uh, if it ever got loose it might want to start spinning. It also, if it ever got loose, it, loose, it might want to walk either direction and put the wrist pin into the uh, cylinder bore. So uh, this slot kind of locks it in place and uh, keeps it from moving around. It's a really good feature. Uh, these moguls do it this way. Uh, some manufacturers lock the uh, wrist pin to the bosses of the piston by a flat and a set screw. But in this case, the wrist pin rotates relative to the uh, uh, bushing inserts in the uh, uh, piston. So um, it it does not move relative to the connecting rod so uh, it's a really good way to uh, keep the wrist pin in place and keep it from doing damage if it ever got loosened up in the bore. And here is the final part uh, parted it off and uh, cut it to final dimension of about five and a half inches long. Uh, it is straight. The uh, GoPros distort and make it look like it's bent but it's not. And You can see that uh, slot feature there really nice in the middle. I did take some Scotch-Brite and uh, polish it up and uh, used a brake hone on the 
um, bronze inserts uh, to hone them out so that this uh, fits really nice in the bore. It's just a little tight, which is fine because it'll wear in and uh, won't uh, be loose and have any play in the in the bore. It should be a nice running uh, wrist pin. And um, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps the channel out. And uh, please leave a comment. I like uh, uh, reading all the comments from everybody and where they're from. So uh, uh, that's all for this video. And uh, see you in the next video.